So let's start, and I have a white wine here, my Sauvignon Blanc from Nelson in New Zealand, which I'm going to use. And sight, I will just say, is the most overlooked aspect of tasting. Now, I say that especially because, you know, with regards to expectations, and I wrote this, wrote about this not too long ago, is that as you take a look at a glass of wine, if you're a trained professional, odds are you have expectations and about 60% of the information that you need to know about the wine. And by the time you smell it, odds are you have 80% of the information you would need to know about the wine. And the rest of that provided in the palate, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes, has to do with the structure of the wine, but also confirming uh, what you've smelled. So sight can provide a lot of information, and this is exactly what I was talking about. It points to a wine's age in terms of the color or storage condition, and that relates to uh, the color and perhaps age. Uh, possible grape variety. Certainly, I would say in regards to the red one I'm using today, the Barolo, uh, certainly a lot to do. And then winemaking techniques. And that could be something like the color of the edge or rim on, let's just say, a Beaujolais Village in terms of carbonic maceration being part of the winemaking process. So the first thing we'll do is, is clarity. And of course, I'm holding the glass by the stem. Everybody can see that. There we go. And uh, I'm tilting it over a white background on my desk. And the first thing I notice is that the wine is clear. I can read through it. And the cause behind that, of course, is finding infiltration. And in terms of finding infiltration, you're removing uh, certainly microbes, which could cause the wine to spoil. Also, uh, yeast left over from fermentation that could cause the wine to re-ferment once in the bottle. Not a good thing. And, and certainly, you're removing grape solids, particulate matter as well. Hence, you know, the, the never-ending debate on whether finding infiltration is good. The only thing I will say, certainly there's room for all styles of wine. And certainly I uh, address the fact that, you know, traditional European wine uh, was not fined or filtered until the technology exists, which was probably somewhere in the mid 18th century. And so, yeah, again, there's room for everything. But I would say in order to stabilize wine, finding infiltration is a valuable tool. So, so far, we know that the wine is clear. The next would, would be brightness. And as I hold the glass again over the white, background. I noticed that there's light reflected not only in the glass but on the tabletop as well. And so there's a brightness scale we'll cover in a moment, but the cause here again, the, we're, we're speaking to the fact that the, the potential of the wine to reflect light. And once again, the cause here is finding infiltration and also the depth of color because obviously the deeper the color, the less proclivity of the wine uh, to reflect light. And the brightness scale is there ranging from dull, hazy, bright, day bright, star bright, and brilliant. And I would say, as you take a look at these scales, as we go through the webinar today, it will be helpful for you to think about extremes because, you know, humans learn with extremes by calibrating extremes very, very quickly. And in this sense, I would point out that a brilliant wine would be champagne. 